Hey all, um, I'm Daniel and that's Nikolai. Um, yeah, sorry for being late, like 10 minutes or something. I was on the bus, yeah. Um, anyways, welcome to our, I don't I think this is our second event. Um, if you came to our club taste today, like uh, last week, that will be our first one. Um, so this is our second one. Um, so, um, every single week, probably next week is probably on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure yet, um, because there's room booking problems, but, um, today we have two, two different courses, so the introduction one will be from um, the first hour, and then the advanced one will be the second hour. So I think, um, so the introduction one is for people who don't know anything, like, they just want to, they, they know, like, they've probably heard of machine learning, deep learning, AI and stuff, but they don't know anything. So the introduction one is for you guys, and the advanced one, um, you probably have done some programming before, so we're using Python, um, you know some maths, um, so that's the advanced prerequisites, but if you don't know anything and you just want to hear what's going on, like in the current state of the art and current like cool algorithms, you can also come attend the second hour. Um, but it will be all in this room. Um, also, on Friday we have another event, um, the Woodside Energy, um, so that's a sponsor. Um, so they're a oil and energy company, the biggest in Australia, the um, private living. Um, mining stuff, and so on Friday, if you can come on um, 3 to 4 p.m., that would be great as well. Uh, oh, this is Jackie, I don't know him as well. Yep. Um, this is the, the Woodside Energy thing. Is that 3 to 4? Because on the Facebook page, it's 3 to 5. It's 3 to 5. Um, it's 3 to 4 oh. is when she'll be like, talking. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Alright. Then what 5 then? Is that like some sort of separate thing? Or? We, we booked a room till 5, so yeah, I guess yeah, we'll, probably have, we'll, have, we'll have food, so... Yeah. Um, so... There will be a panel of three people. Um, so... There will be approximately these people helping, like, it depends, but... So yeah, I'm Daniel, we also have Ben, Johnny, Nigel, Anan, um, Christopher, and Nikolai, probably Jackie as well, but yeah, but it depends. Um, anyways, just a disclaimer, um... So anything that we teach here, like, if you go to a lecture and you say, oh, the data science guys, like, said this, and then you're, like, in your assignments, you write something, please don't say that we, like, taught you something. Like, this is not university courses, so we're not actually, so the, um, the maths and stats school was nice enough to allow us to hold these, and so they support us. Just don't say that, like, yeah, just, we're not responsible for any, like, damages if you... <laughs> Yeah, and the un and UNSW and the math school. Just so yeah. Also, no recordings. Only we can record. Just a strict notice. Um, and we'll try our best to acknowledge anyone for the material and stuff that we use. Yeah, just just the first one's extremely important. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So you probably know this scene from Avengers. Um, so Jarvis and Ultron, right? So there's a difference. Okay, there's a very big difference. I want to like like really make this sure that there's a big difference between artificial general intelligence and artificial intelligence, right? So currently, the world, we're still using artificial intelligence. It's not really intelligence, but it's close to it. So artificial general intelligence is like, um, so it's a robot and any software system that can do whatever they want. They have, like, they have an understanding of the world around them. They can learn by themselves without any human input. However, unfortunately, currently, um, the systems that we use, so artificial intelligence systems now, are very basic currently. So I just want to reiterate that. So, so just to, yeah, so all the systems that we're going to learn now are like sub-level, like real artificial intelligence. I would say probably an age of like, if the most advanced ones like DeepMind and stuff, they'll probably be like, um, probably the intelligence of like some mouse or like young child, something like that. Um, but Artificial general intelligence or AGI probably in my opinion probably like at least 20 years, okay? At least 20 years Okay, so what is artificial intelligence? So that's a very big question everyone keeps asking like what the hell is AI? Um, so the biggest field I would say so the mother field is called data science um, So within data science there are multiple other subfields like programming statistics. I didn't show that so I just put artificial intelligence um, another name for AI is called pattern recognition. So whenever you hear pattern recognition, you can apply this in many fields like um, crime, um, forensics, and you know anything which requires patterns, requires you identifying patterns, but not human level. So you want the machine to identify patterns. 
Um, so within, within this field of pattern recognition, we have two subfields. Um, there are probably others, but I'm not going to include them. Um, I, I named them machine learning and statistical algorithms. So I separated them. So the difference, so you probably heard all the um, hype in machine learning, like supervised learning, deep learning, um, reinforcement learning, and unsupervised learning. So these are the main, the main four fields within machine learning, those four things. Um, so all the, all the current um, cool algorithms and stuff is in within reinforcement learning and deep learning. Um, so the other segment of AI, which remember there's only two, so I only put two, there might be more, um, is these four segments. So knowledge representation, network systems, stochastic modeling, and statistical methods. So these ones are, I would say, separate from the ones of machine learning. Because the difference between machine learning and statistical methods is in machine learning, you get the data, you build a model. In statistical algorithms, you build a model, then you get the data, then you verify your model. So it's a bit different. Um, so, yeah, so there, and also there are four subfields within AI, the main four subfields. These include computer vision, natural language processing, tabular data, and robotics. Also, these slides will be posted. Yeah. Um, so these four subfields, um, so computer vision is like, um, has anyone used like Google Translate? The, mm -hmm. Like you can take a photo of any text and then it translates to any language, yeah. That's Google Translate. Um, you can download an app if you don't know about it. Natural language processing is free text. So any text, um, the computer tries to understand something about the text. So something like, um, has anyone heard of IBM's Watson thing? Like they ask questions and stuff and then answer it, yeah? Something like that. So that's the natural language processing. Tabular data is just normal tables, um, also very important. So like if you have an insurance, they'll keep all your data in a table format, and so you want to analyze that. Um, and so, and the other one is robotics. So robotics would also be a field of AI, so they can do, so if you know, um, um, yeah, anyways, yeah, robotics. There's lots of stuff in robotics as well. Um, but these are the main four subfields. Um, there may be others, but then these are the four biggest ones. Um, I think a research before said that approximately within um, people who understand data science, only 25-ish percent understand computer vision. Approximately 25-ish percent understand natural language processing. Nearly 100 percent understand tabular data, and robotics probably 10 to 25 percent. So we we will be covering um, the three first ones, not not robotics. Okay, so some of the um, current AI systems. So DeepMind, right? So um, this is Go, so the game of Go. So what DeepMind has done is that they, um, so they have two different systems called AlphaGo and currently AlphaGo Zero. So AlphaGo was trained on um, past Go games. So Go is like a, um, so it's like a black and white checker board thing, and you have to place it, and you want to eat, you want to create a boundary around your opponent, and then you eat all your pieces. Um, so that's Go. Um, so, so the currently, so AlphaGo's original system, which was developed a few years ago, so just called AlphaGo. That system managed to beat the current top world master, grandmaster for Go, and they said that the number of moves required to compute every single one is more than the number of atoms in the whole universe. So they actually managed to beat grandmaster and stuff, so that's quite cool. The current system called AlphaGo Zero is a bit different. Um, the original system used something called supervised learning. So you have old data about the games, and then they train a system to play the games. The current system, which is called AlphaGo Zero, has no data at all. Um, it trains by itself. It learns the game as it goes on, by itself. So you don't do any human input. Well, you have to like specify the boundary conditions and stuff. But there's no human data at all. Yep. What do you think is more useful of the two? More useful. Okay, so currently um, AlphaGo's original system will be more applied in real life. Um, AlphaGo's zero system, which is reinforcement learning, so you let it do whatever it like, um, that's actually more complicated because you actually have to identify the boundary conditions. You have to like say, oh, you can't go left, you can't go right, something like that. So currently, the original system would be more useful. Yep. What's the implication of uh, the difference between AlphaGo Zero and AlphaGo? I mean, if you have uh, a system that basically can uh, do, do all, the, all the combinations, right? How is that different to as you're starting from scratch? Okay, so AlphaGo's original system, um, yeah, so it uses all data, so it played like, I don't know, 10, I don't know how many games, lots, let's just say lots of games. So they can work out, oh, if you move left, you have to counteract this with the other move. And then the current system um, does, yeah, something from scratch. So the, um, I would say the only difference is that DeepMind actually managed to um, train it on a very small scale machine. So they only use like, I think, was it one GPU? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like four, four GPU? Uh, it was one GPU cluster, so oh. four. 
Yeah. But yeah, essentially, uh, alpha, why AlphaGo Zero is like cool is because they didn't have any historical data, so it literally just played against itself and learned about the game, you know, from scratch without you. Te well, you, te you tell it the rules, but you know, it works everything out from there. It plays by itself. Um, it figures out the best moves by itself. It hasn't seen any humans uh, play. Whilst AlphaGo has seen humans play, it knows um, what just from cute like grandmasters playing what are good moves. What are bad moves, and it learns from that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the difference is, um, so I would say the biggest innovation will be actually the compute time required. So I think AlphaGo originally had like I don't know, was it one thousand computers? I can't really remember. But it required a Google's whole like center just to compute all the possibilities. But AlphaGo Zero learned by itself and it only required like a few GPUs. So like your own home computer can do it. Um, so the difference was, um, so that before the original AlphaGo the so it started like the performance, so if you say this was performance, uh, right, it would like do something like this, and it was a little bit better than the human, right? This is the original AlphaGo, right? It had original data, so it had some data from before, this is the original data, and then it trained the system, right? And this is human level in, um, performance. But then AlphaGo Zero, right, it started from like something over here, right, and it probably did like something like this, but then, right, I, I don't know, it's probably still going. But that's AlphaGo Zero. It started from a very low point because it doesn't know anything about the game. It does like it puts a piece over here, and then it thinks that it's it's still its next turn, and then it puts another piece. But obviously that's not allowed. But yeah, it doesn't know anything. But then it managed to surpass AlphaGo, um, yeah, which is quite amazing because before people had to train train the system. Now you don't actually need to do anything. No training at all. So like in, com in comparison to the two systems, because AlphaGo is primarily based on like previous data, mm -hmm. is it is it like super capable for all like we sort of term this creativity? Because all it's really doing is just categorizing moves we've seen in the past in response to certain actions. Whereas like AlphaGo Zero learns by itself. So would that be capable of like exhibiting creativity, like coming up with different sort of strategies? Or something? Interesting question. Okay, so in my opinion, um, yes. Yeah, okay, I was, gonna <laughs> I was gonna say that. Okay, fine, I'll just continue on. Yes, okay, the answer is yes. Unless if you want a more extended answer, but I might not have time. Okay, anyway, so our other AI systems, um, yeah, I'll talk about that later, but so at Facebook, so this is called Deep Pose. So what they can do is you get any image or any video, and they can um, outline the human's movements and capture the human's movements by itself. So no, there's no like, you know the, um, in the movies, the motion sensor captures, like they put like stuff on your face and everywhere, and then no, no need for that, just the human. So this was a few weeks ago, they released some paper about it. And so, what, so what, what can this be applied for? Well, you know in movies, you don't need those tiny things anymore, right? You can just um, use those systems. Well, not, not yet, but something like that. So that's Facebook. Um, so... Also, OpenAI, so they developed a system to play um, Dota. So you probably, some people probably know that game, but they managed, but this is only um, 1v1, so one player versus one player, so not that advanced yet. Um, they're, they're trying to do five players versus five players, um, but that's way more complicated. But currently, 1v1, they beat um, some people. Yeah, so that's... <laughs> not everyone, okay? They, the system didn't manage to beat some games, but... It's quite successful. Also, Boston Dynamics. So you've probably seen these robots before. So they, um, they were. So the, these guys, um, they were part of Google as well. So DMI's part of Google. Boston Dynamics is also part of Google, but I think it got sold to someone else. Um, but yeah, these guys are the robotics people. Softbank. I'm Soft, sorry. To Softbank. Oh, Softbank. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. So these guys are the robotics people, and they. No. Good question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the introduction course would um, so remember the diagram I showed you before. The introduction course would be focusing on these segments, right? So, so we're going to focus on supervised learning, deep learning, statistical methods, and so these are the three segments. And we are mainly focused on tabular data. Okay, so remember AI is a very, very, very large field. If you write a whole textbook on like the whole field of AI, it'd probably be like this thick. So we're only focusing on tabular data. It's a very large field as well. That's what the main um, focus of. So that's the main economic growth is tabular data. Um, 
Well, that's the introduction course. The advanced course is we're going to focus on computer vision, natural language processing, um, and also other algorithms like unsupervised learning, statistic, um, stochastic modeling, and network systems. So the advanced one will focus on a larger range. Um, Okay, so the currently, the, um, I would say the biggest AI players currently are DeepMind, Facebook, Spare, Boston Dynamics, OpenAI, Google's Research, so that's the Jeffrey Hinton guy, um, the, and the Peter Norwig, if you know him, um, and Baidu. Um, so these are the main six players, like the biggest ones, I would say. So there's probably like Microsoft and stuff, I just can't fit it on the screen. So, yeah, but... But these ones, so in terms of like the who's the most powerful, like who has the most, like the most power over the AI field, I would say it's probably DeepMind and Facebook and OpenAI. So these, and well, Google, well, they own DeepMind, so yeah. So Google's kind of like the front of the race currently. So Facebook's like lagging a little bit behind, and OpenAI is probably somewhere a bit lower. And yeah, Baidu is also quite important because they did the Chinese transition, um, translation systems, and Chinese is very hard to translate. Um, so these are also, like in terms of, so those were companies before, um, in terms of university level labs, we have to, so Stanford kind of actually has like a um, monopoly, kind of. Um, the Stanford AI lab, um, the natural language processing group, so those, those were the guys who created GLOVE, word embeddings, if you know. Computer vision is with Becky Lee, if you know her as well. Um, Convolution on your nets, she's a pioneer kind of person. And yeah, so the, and the, um, that's MIT's AI lab. So those are all the currently um, interesting players. So okay, so now let's go to the stuff of AI. Um, so currently, so I have to reiterate very largely, like this is extremely important. Maths is a foundation of artificial intelligence. If you don't understand maths, too bad. Okay, you're not going to understand anything in AI. Okay, you need to understand maths. So you've probably see, see, seen some of these equations before. I try to like minimize the number of equations. So that, uh, um, if you know like linear regression, that's the least squares formula for linear regression. You're, if you did maths, you probably understand that. Um, but don't worry if these like symbols don't mean anything to you. Don't worry, we're going to learn them. But that's uh, these are the formulas. So that's a neural network formula. Um, this is um, singular value decomposition. The cost function, that's probably Bayes' rule, if you know. Um, that's Markov systems, and that's gradient descent. But don't worry if you don't know what they're saying. Um, we're going to understand that. Um, but yeah, I just have to reiterate, maths is extremely important. And yes, although maths is important, programming is even more important, I would say. <laughs> well, okay, fine, I would say like 50-50%, but programming is extremely important. There's no point of learning AI if you don't even know how to apply it. Like, you have some formula, oh, okay, if I have like 10 gigabytes of data, or you're, you're gonna look at through every single line by yourself and apply the maths formula, you're not gonna do that. You let the computer do it, right? So these are some of the stuff that you might be doing in um, AI, like this one is the gradient descent, working at the, so this is early stopping and stuff, but don't worry about that. Um, this one is natural language processing, so lemmatization of words, which is like, uh, I'll talk about that later. Um, this one is, um, this one is compression of data. So if you upload some data into memory and it like takes too much memory, how do you like actually compress it and process it faster? And this one is vocabularies of counting. So this is counting a how many like how, how do we tabulate data in counts? Like if you have a data of like um, apple, 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 orange, orange, right? So apple will be three and orange will be two. So that's for counting data. Very important as well. So these are just some of the stuff that you might be doing when you're in the AI field. Um, there's obviously like other algorithms like um, deep learning algorithms and other. I didn't actually show that, um, but yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah, so like in terms of like the programming, I keep hearing like people keep bouncing between like Python and R. Oh, Python. 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 You said Python's the best one? Uh, R, is, R is more for statistics. Yeah. Python, Python, Python. <laughs> um, okay, so what's the difference between Python and R? Um, so I, um, I think TensorFlow did release a package for R. I'm sorry. That's uh, probably where we use for package. And yeah. Do an AI. Yeah, correct. TensorFlow. But although they did release it for R, so I can't really say that anymore. Um, um, but uh, in terms of um, syntax, I would say if you're a statistics background, you probably used R before. Um, so R is probably better for you guys. But R, I would say, is a more, um, I don't know. Sorry. 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, for statistical inference. Yeah. Yeah, it's for like hypothesis testing. Yeah. Stuff like that. Better. It's better for hypothesis. Although there's stats models, so. Yeah. Anything, more. anything more stats? Is, is yeah, R is kind of bad. Yep. Uh, what would you suggest learning? Python. <laughs> what is the game? You go to industry and you're like developing AI. So if you want to go to DeepMind, please don't use R. Yeah. If you go to DeepMind, R is not, not, yeah. So if you want to go to DeepMind, if you want to work in DeepMind, don't use R. That's my main thing because their main language is Python. But you can use R if you want. If you want to learn like three, what would be the top three? The top three in like the whole programming world? Like not including AI? Python, R, C++. Well, I would say Python or C, but okay. No, it's okay, fine. Um, what, what about if the, if the domain in which you're working is, um, is oh, for example, like biology, yes. for example? Biology. That, that should do a lot of that. SQL, Python, R. Wait, wait, right, but, so, so, but the, 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 that, I mean, the, the, all the uh, researchers seem to be working in, 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 with R. Yeah. Um, so, is there a lot of interface between R? Uh, uh, why researchers work with R is because of it's better like for statistics, so like stuff like hypothesis testing. Um, if you guys done that, yeah, it's like. Um, yeah, yeah, it's essentially it's like it's better for proving stuff. So like, how would be better for statistical algorithms because you're building models and verifying them? Well, it's it's better for proving them. It's not better for implementing. I would yeah. say, like in my opinion, it's just because universities teach R and that's why like statisticians use it. Like if you know, so for example. No, no, no. It's it's. I'm it's, it's, no, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Sure. Um, for stats, we should be using R, and for other things, yeah. Like but, that's no, no. Now I'll show you an example. Like <laughs> in R. <laughs> right. This is the what wasn't this the matrix multiplication <laughs> sign? Do you know how annoying yeah. it is that hypothesis testing in that level? Well, you can just use that models. Okay, anyways, yeah, but that's, that's, uh, that's R, okay? And Python is just this, it's just a time symbol. Anyways, don't worry about that. That's, yeah, we're not actually arguing about, but we're using Python. Oh, oh this is programming. Oh. Talk about supervising. Yeah, I was gonna do that, yeah. Oh, uh, I'll do it, I'll do it. Yeah. There was a thing I wanted to show you. Yes. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay, so now we're going to go into the... So the difference between supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement, and... Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, it is also semi-supervised. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't actually include that, but yeah. So in terms of, so if you consider... Um, so this is human intervention. So humans actually have to contribute to the algorithm. And this one is like, you know, zero human intervention. Well, there is human intervention, but I would say um, as least as possible. So if you if you plot like if you plot it in this line, well, artificial general intelligence will be down, right? It has zero human input at all. After you after you program some sort of system, the AGI will do whatever it likes. Okay, so supervised learning is somewhere here. Right. Supervised learning requires you to have data, original past historical data, and then you want to predict something. For example, um, so for example, if you have like a country's um, economic output, right? Oops. Right. How is this related to happiness, for example, of a country? Right, so you want to work out some sort of function which maps the economic output to happiness. So that's supervised learning. Um, so maybe the graph will probably look like this. If you have economic output um, and happiness, it probably looks like, I don't know, something like this. Right, probably not. Probably like somewhere over here. There's some... But anyways, you want to have some sort of function. So yeah, someone said linear regression, right? So you just fit a, it kind of looks like a straight line. But that's supervised learning, you're trying to fit some sort of line, not really a line, it doesn't have to be a line, um, but some sort, of, um, some sort of function. So that's supervised learning. Um, so the next one, I would, yeah, so semi-supervised, that's, yeah. <clears throat> semi-supervised learning is the next um, type of algorithm which is 
more closer to um, AGI than actually supervised. So you have sometimes you supervise algorithms, sometimes you have data, sometimes you don't. And so you're trying to um, go between both worlds and you're trying to learn the algorithm like that. Um, anyways, I won't discuss about that, but just, yeah, just note about that. Um, we also have, um, so the, the closest one to AGI would probably be unsupervised learning. Right, unsupervised learning is you don't do anything, they just tell you what's in the data. So that's very interesting. So pretend if you have some sort of, pretend you want to have, so the um, economic output and happiness, right, and then the same graph, right? Pretend I don't actually build a function, but I just want to know, oh, there is probably a function, right? The, the machine will probably understand, oh, okay, let me just put a straight line, right? This one actually has to specify, can you, can you please put a straight line? Unsupervised learning, it does whatever it wants, okay? So it can put a straight line, it can put like a parabola, whatever, okay? But that's unsupervised learning. So the next one, the, the next one is probably reinforcement learning, right? Reinforcement learning is not as, um, so you still have to intervene in reinforcement learning. You have to provide it um, to a boundary condition. So for example, if you're playing chess, right? You can't like move some sort of moves, right? So you have to, you have to actually um, put those boundary conditions and you have to put conditions so this is, but it's kind of, it's getting closer to unsupervised learning because like the alpha goes zero, it does whatever it likes. Um, so that's kind of getting closer to unsupervised learning, which is extremely, extremely powerful because you know it's getting closer and closer to artificial general intelligence. Right, and then we also, and then everything else is in between. Um, but, um, so deep learning, where the hell does deep learning fit on the scale then, right? Deep learning is not actually a um, concept, right? These are con... Did, did everyone understand us? Because it's important you understand us. Did, did, yeah. Does anyone not understand what that means? Like any of those means? Yeah. What would be the biggest difference between um, supervised learning and reinforcement learning? Uh, um, yeah, sure, sure. So, reinforce, uh, supervised learning is essentially X is the data. What? I'm not sure. I'm oh. the camera, but yeah. Oh, right. Um, su supervised is X equals Y. Or mx e mx plus b equals y. Essentially, you're trying to find this is the data you have, and then there's these two parameters that you're trying to like find that sh tells you what y is your output. So x is your input, um, y is your output, and it, this assumes you you know both of these. You have some sort of some kind of data of both of these, um, and then reinforcement learning. Um, I know I know he won't explain it well. So. Um, reinforcement learning is essentially mx plus b, and you want to find like z, and you, you don't have any idea like how this e you don't have any past history of how this equals to that, like at all. But you're just trying to find z. Um, so yeah, that's an easy way to explain it. There's a bit more reinforcement learning is actually pretty difficult, but that's the general gist of it. Reinforcement learning is about the actually to choose them. Action to tend to get to the max, the maximum, yeah, yeah. maximum reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's, it's yeah, it's to try and find cost the max. In which some rules you will get reward and some in you will get uh, negative reward, and then you learn to navigate in uncertain environment actually with yeah. certain set of rules. So that's, that's the yeah, yeah, that's the the, the main just of it. Um, yeah. and then unsupervised is like you have X. Try to find some rule in X. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't even have Y, so. Cool. Um, if you want to like a more intuitive understanding, so pretend this is the lecture room, right? So supervised learning is you know everything about it. So you can go outside the lecture room and you can see the whole world. So that's kind of your X. You want to predict something. Unsupervised learning is you're enclosed in this room, but you can move around. But you can't actually see the outside. You actually have to go outside. So that's kind of like reinforcement learning. You actually have to do the action to go outside and explore the world before you can actually say something about the world. So unsupervised, you're like the god. You know everything about the data. Reinforcement, you only know like subsections. Yeah. Let's go. Well, uh, we, we don't teach reinforcement yeah, learning in this class, but we will have someone uh, who's, uh, who's like a lecturer to come and teach it for like maybe one or two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, oh yeah, also about deep learning. So the question was where the hell does deep learning fit on the scale? Um, 
But actually, deep learning will probably fit everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're probably, I don't know about AGI, like we don't know anything about it yet. But uh, yeah, it will, deep learning will probably fit somewhere over here. Um, however, most of the interesting stuff is actually over here somewhere and over here. Right. Um, unsupervised, not so much, but still used. Um, but I don't know about AGI, because <laughs> you know, no one knows about AGI yet. But it's somewhere on this scale, so that's deep learning. Okay, so anyways, I was going to show you, so do, what, what, what is deep learning? So that's the question, right? So if you see, so this is TensorFlow's playground, um, so you can access it yourself. So, what we're, so our aim is to build some sort of boundary which recognizes the blue and the orange dots, right? So we have to separate this somehow, right? So, uh, right, so if you press play, it's learning some sort of function which maps the blue one and the orange one, so it kind of separates it, right? So obviously if you're like a naive person, oh, this, this works, right? You'll probably just add more layers. Uh, let's just do that. Uh, this is probably what most people probably do. Um, if you don't know anything about AI and stuff, this is what people will do. Just add more layers, um, you know, add more neurons. Da, 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 da. Anyways, yeah. But this is, this, you'll actually see this in real life, okay? People will actually do that. Just add more layers, add more neurons, and then, well, oh, good, you've got a function. Right? So that's what they're going to do. Um, but in our courses, we're going to teach you how to actually use neural networks, but we're not actually going to teach you this, this, like, you know, just adding layers. You're not, you don't even know what you're doing. Um, in fact, you don't even need to have any layers. Just add more features. Oh, wait, you have to reset. Yeah. I don't think you need science. Yeah, you don't need science. But as you can see, you don't need any layers at all. You just need to add some extra features and you already learn the function. Um, so, this, you don't, so this is linear regression. That's just linear regression. So you don't actually need any neural network at all to learn the function. Okay, so that's just a point I want to point. Um, so, yeah, that's not linear. It's linear Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, well, logistic regression, but yeah. But I just, yeah. Yeah, it's logistic. It's kind of It is. It's. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, there are only two classes. Okay. Anyways, so like another function like this, like um, wait. Right. You're trying to separate the blue ones, right? The so you want to build some sort of like cross, cross function which separates this one and that one and like these, right? The blue and the orange. So yeah, you can just use the same output, it should work, right? Um, well, likewise, if you add more layers, it should also work, right? I say should, doesn't mean it always will. But it doesn't mean you need to add more layers, because when you add more layers, you don't even know what's going on anymore. But, but, but then we will see that you sometimes have to add more layers, right? So this one is also easy, right? You just want to separate the blue and the orange, oh, that's fine, right? However, you realize that the function is, looks like that, right? So maybe, like, it feels intuitively we have to put, like, some sort of line like this, right? But this is kind of, yeah, so in order to do that, we're going to learn an advanced course called regularization. So this add some sort of penalty, right? And I'll try to learn some, extra, like, a more straighter line. So that's called regularization. You're trying to, you're not, you're trying to fit more straighter lines between data. Um, also the last one, you want to classify spirals, okay, so well now this is when logistic regression or multinomial regression fails, okay, so I'll show you what happens. And as you can see, it's like, can you see the stuttering? So it's kind of, it can't really optimize any function to map this input, right, so even if you add like these extra features, so these are signs, right? Signs of x and signs of x1 and signs of x2. It will still, yeah. As you can see, it's failing, right? It's clearly not learning any function at all, right? It doesn't look like. And so instead, what we can do? So now we have to add layers. We have to, unfortunately, right? But don't. But we're not going to add like this many layers, right? This should work, but it will take quite a long time. I don't want to, yeah. So. Let's try. So if you add like, um, 
These one, okay, so these like you know these numbers like if you add and minus, like you add more neurons into the layer, like you just add more inputs. Um, so that's actually what you have to do that um, when you're in the field. You actually have to like manually um, change these numbers. Well, there are automatic methods, but I mean, I, but you'll probably have to do it manually at first. So if you run this, sorry, um, as you can see, nothing really happens as well, although it's like increasing. Uh, that? No, I think 10 is fine. But you can see it's doing something, right? So using one layer, it kind of, you know, kind of, it still has, it, it, as you can see, it's optimizing, right? Although it kind of misses that, but then it, it will see, like, over, like, I don't know how many epochs, but as you can see, the loss, so this is the loss, it's decreasing because it will learn. Although, yeah, as you can see, it's slowly creeping, right? So that's kind of like a function. Well, obviously, you can add more layers. If you add more layers, it should do better. Well, I say should, doesn't mean it will. Right? You can also add more neurons if you want. Losses prediction error? Okay. Yeah, so there's two losses, the test loss and the training loss. So training loss is the, your old data. So you want to fit some sort of function, and then you have some sort of loss function. On the test loss, if you have testing data, so you're not letting the algorithm look at the, tra um, the data, then um, that's the test loss. Um, but there's a function, but we'll show you, yeah. Um, so as you can see, if you add more neurons, it kind of learns a spiral. Yeah, there's also, so that's classification. So there's two subfields mainly, classification and regression. So classification is you have different classes like these, right? Pretend you want to predict if someone's going to die or survive. So that's like a classification problem. Or pretend if someone's like um, uh, lots of money or very little money. So it's like a classification problem. But then there is regression problems, right? So if you want to predict if someone has money, like not just like high income and low income, you want to actually predict a number, like 10,000, 9,000, and so on, then regression. So right, this is a regression. Um, so let's try like a normal. Um, this is just linear regression. As you can see, it's not really working. So linear regression is failing to identify some sort of relationship because, <laughs> well, that's just sad. <coughs> so then you have to add one layer at least, probably. Yeah, okay. But as you can see, if you add one layer with like two neurons, you can kind of get the function. As you can see, it's stuttering. But that's because it's trying to like think, oh, should I do this, should I do that? But that's like, that's mathematical optimization, but that's kind of like, you can use one layer and it should work. Um, there's also this one. Um, right, you're trying to separate um, six different clusters. <coughs> kind of. Right, as you can see, it's not really effective, right, just one layer. It kind of can understand those four things over there. So maybe if we add more neurons, it should work. Right, so as you can see, if you add more neurons, it kind of works. Right, you can see these four, uh, six different clusters. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like, that's, this is deep learning. So this is literally deep learning. You just add layers, add more neurons. Um, there's also something called the activation function. Um, so currently we're using the TAN H activation function, or TAN. Um, so what is the activation function? So let's say if we change it. No, 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 no it's just a, I'm not going to say it. It's just a snapshot. Right, so these are, there's different stuff you can choose, like the sigmoid, the linear activation function. Anyways, you get to, yeah, the linear fail. Um, but, so these are the different activation functions. You will learn about them, like what they are and stuff later. But I'm just trying to give you a snapshot into like what is deep learning. So that's like what people keep asking, like what the hell is it? Um, so this is kind of deep learning. So this is just neural networks, kind of, in a graphical way. Um, so yeah, these, these, like, these stuff that you can play around, like noise. Um, so we're going to learn about that. Batch size, you'll also learn. So activation functions, learning rates, regularization. And yeah, so those are the concepts that we need to learn about. Um, in the introduction course. So the advanced one will focus more on actually regularization and, uh, and other methods. Um,
Alright, um, I'll show you guys some cool stuff that you can do with uh, artificial or machine learning. Um, so once you get good, you'll be able to do this. Once you get good, you'll be Once you get into more advanced stuff, you'll be able to implement stuff like these. Um, so this is like a real-time classification model. Um, Oh, it's a real time computer vision classification model, but yeah. It's able to identify like whether this is a person um, in a chair in real time. So yeah, that's pretty cool. What else? So yeah, like in self-driving cars, you want to identify like what the stuff, like if it's a person or a car. So it's kind of using that. Yeah, but it's this is the one he was talking about? Yeah, so Facebook's phone. 10 experts say a website is more effective than holding up a hand-drawn sign. Get your work. Besides, so right now, this, the advanced course is taught by Daniel mainly, but uh, our intro course is actually taught by two other people mainly. Uh, one is the tutor for, well, he used to be the tutor for Data 101, and he's an honor student. Is it Data 101? Yeah, 1001. Yeah, that's the introduction to Data Science course. So he, he's actually, he was the tutor for it, so um, that would be good. And then the other guy, he was at. What's that? What's a credit scoring company? Uh, he works at a credit scoring company at the data center. So, you know, um, so if you didn't understand anything uh, this week, you, you'll be able to understand it. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. Yeah. Right. Really right. Thank you. Yeah. So the advanced one will still be here.